So the same thing is going to happen here. Just draw a triangle. I, I know my triangles tend to kind of look equilateral, equiangular, but it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to draw something to uh, scale or anything. So don't worry about it. I, I typically always start with A, B, C. So A is going to be 48, B is 22, and A, little a over here, is 5. I want you quickly to find, you have to find little c, little b, and angle c. Do that with somebody sitting near you. So I'll pause it, and then I'll put some answers up there. There they are. Again, I would start with the angle C, doing the 180 minus the sum. You get 110. Yeah. For little c, then, I'm putting little c in the top left corner. The angle's on the bottom. You get about 6.32. And little b, I'm getting about 2.52. I always get the question, you know, should I be wrong or not? Should I, whatever. Um, the more you round off, if you start doing area problems to these triangles, you can start to get significantly off later on in the problem. So if you're doing all the work, like I showed you on the calculator, you shouldn't have to round off until the end of the problem. But if you do 5 divided by the sine of 48, round that answer, type in the sine of 110, round that answer, and then multiply by the two rounded answers together, you, you start to lose... Um, your accuracy, I guess, on, on the problem. So, <coughs> two, two decimal places, great plenty for us. Um, but try not to round off until you're done with the problem. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not skipping it. It must be at the bottom of this one. So, here's where they're talking about the ambiguous case. So if you look at the triangle over there, um, A, B, C, it's drawn in H. H is called an altitude of the triangle. It's the, it's the height of the triangle. It's coming out of one angle to the opposite side. Remember back to your days of geometry. That does not mean that it bisects A to C. Right? It doesn't necessarily split AC, which most of you are probably thinking about as a base. It doesn't necessarily split it into two equal parts. It doesn't, all, and it doesn't even have to be inside the triangle, right? Sometimes we, you do, yeah. we do triangles in geometry that kind of were obtuse angled, and the height was outside the triangle. Examine the height of the triangle. How can we relate that to angle A? So if I draw in the height, wherever it would be located, I've created two right triangles now. So I'm going to take angle A and relate it to H and C by saying the sine of angle A is equal to the opposite H over C. So really what I'm doing is just working with that red triangle and it allows me to do Sokotoa. Sine of A would be the opposite H over hypotenuse C. If you multiply both sides by C, C times the sine of A is the same thing as H. So when you look at the three possibilities up here, no triangles will exist. If this is the information given to us, no triangles exist if A is smaller than C times the sine of A, which would be saying <coughs> if the partner side is less than H. So now you guys are probably sitting there saying, what do you mean by partner side? If you draw a triangle, and it turns out to be two sides and an angle that's not included. So in this case, what we're concentrating on is we have, I give you a side, I give you a side. What would be the included angle? B, right? Included means where the two sides come together. So this would be the included angle. 
but I would be giving you like A or C. Then you are dealing with the possibility of an ambiguous case. That's when I want you to stop what you're doing and redraw the triangle so that the given angle is in the lower left. Why did I call it partner? A, why did I call it partner? Because it's partnered up with side A, right? So when I refer to the partner side, it's the one that's related or partnered with the given angle. And this one we will refer to as the other side. So, you're just going to be fine along on the exam. Draw triangle ABC. Fill it all in. Then the next problem, you do the same thing, and all of a sudden you realize, wait a second, this triangle is two sides and the angle that's not between the two sides. Erase your drawing and redraw it so that the angle is here, the partner side goes here, and the other side is here every time. That's going to be the same thing, and you'll never get it wrong. Why would it make sense that if the partner side is smaller than H, there's not going to be a triangle? Why would that make sense? Do you guys know what, like, like circus tents? Can you visualize a circus tent? Yes. That's where they, you know, back in the day, they would have that center pole, right? That would go way up in the middle, and then the tent kind of comes off it like this, right? And then they stake it from there. But there's that one center pole. What would happen if I put like a 200 foot pole in the in the center of the circus, and the tent is only five feet tall? <laughs> and I'm exaggerating, but but if the height pushes way up in the air, in other words, the the partner is 10 feet tall, the height of the inside is. 20 feet, that other side, it can't touch the ground anymore, right? So you'll hear me say that. If the circus pole is too tall, the tent doesn't work. So if the height is too tall, the triangle will not work. This, the second rule is one triangle exists <coughs> if A equals C sine of A, which um, I'm going to write down here. Rule two, one triangle. A equals C sine of A. If the partner side equals your height, what that's telling you is there isn't actually a side sticking out when you draw it. There's not a side sticking out. It's actually the altitude of your triangle. When these are the same thing, you're dealing with the right triangle. Back in the days of geometry, there's a little rule that talks about if one of the sides that you know in angle side side is an altitude or a leg of the right triangle, you're good. Go ahead and work with it. What's the second rule? So rule number two has two parts to it. Either it's possible that they're identical sides, or, or uh, the partner side is greater than the other side. So remember when I when I drew this very first thing for you and I took that one side and I rotate it back and it hit again? That would be not, I'm exaggerating here. I'm exaggerating this. If that partner side is Huge, right? Compared to the other. Could I swing this guy back no. and get it to touch before it gets to here? No, because no, when you when you look at the arc, it would be way down here. And what it would be is just a flip of this whole triangle pointing this direction. So that's your thinking. Then you have one triangle. If they're identical, one, or if that one is way too large, I mean it's just way bigger than the other side, one triangle. Uh, the last rule, two distinct triangles, so rule three, there will be two triangles, two triangles, if C sine of A is smaller than 
a, which is smaller than c. So what that means is if your height is smaller than uh, the partner, because what, what happens if the partner is too big for the height? That doesn't work, right? So it has to be that the height fits. So if the height fits when you compare it to the partner, and the partner is smaller than the other, because what happens if the partner is bigger than the other? Then you're back up here in this rule. So the height has to be smaller than the partner, so we don't break the like the circus tent rule. And the partner has to be smaller than the other, so we don't break this super huge <coughs> one side rule. Then you're gonna have two triangles. I know right now it's probably like, what is he talking about? But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the rule. Okay, watch this. So we draw our triangle. We always go A, B, C. Little A is 15. Little B is 25. Big A is 85. A lot of you are going to continue on with this problem, and you're just going to blow through it using the law of signs. And maybe you'll get lucky and it will work. Maybe you won't. What do you know? When you talk about S's and A's, what do you know? Two sides. Do you know the included angle? No. No. So this is right there. That's one of those drawings. I'm telling you, stop and redraw it. Redraw it. We don't want to work with this. I can do this. You probably can't. The angle that you know is 85. I will always want you to put the angle that you know in the lower left-hand corner. The partner side is 15. So those two were in the right location, but the thing that's going to mess something up is this 25. Instead of it being down here, I want you to redraw the triangle sort of this on the top left of the triangle. So do you see what I did? This is the possibility of the ambiguous case. All I'm asking you to do is always put that given angle then here, its partner side there, and the other side there. Every time. Most triangles, you don't have to worry about it, but it's all because we gave you an angle and two sides, and it wasn't the included <laughs> angle. Oh, I remember. And why did we not use that in geometry? Oh, it's up there. Yeah, right. So, so, right. so <laughs> drop your altitude. Drop your altitude. Find your height. Sine of 85 is equal to opposite H over 25. What does that tell you? Multiply it both sides by 25. What do you get? What's 25 times the sine of 85? 24.9. Now, Which symbol do I put in there? A greater than or a less than or an equal to? I put a greater than. What rule are we breaking? The height of the right? The height of the triangle is being pushed, you know, whatever, 25 feet into the air, almost 25 feet in the air, and one of the sides of the triangle is only 15. Can it touch the ground anymore? No. So it breaks the very first rule. No triangles. No triangles exist. This is the problem where during the <coughs> test, the people who aren't studying this come up to me and say, my calculator isn't working. <laughs> you guys are laughing, but I'm going to have the last laugh because I will start laughing at you during the test in hopes that I remind you, pay attention to what you're doing. Because if you try to calculate... Every one of you in this problem is going to try to do angle B. What's going to happen when you go to find angle B? 
So we have these two things and that on the bottom. So watch what happened. Side 15, um, what's the angle that I know? 85. Sine of 85 divided by 15. That's what I know. The side that I know is, oh, the wrong one. No, we're finding angle B. Got it. Multiply by side 25 now. Now remember that, that, that's equal to sine of A. So you have to inverse it. So you go inverse sine of your answer. They can't surmise. My calculator is not working. <laughs> the reason why it's not working is the calculator is telling you it doesn't work. Okay?